Well, good evening, saints. It is December 26th, 2018. And this day on the calendar, as well as the title of our message, is Boxing Day. Come on. Everyone say, Boxing Day. We're going to dive into the depths of what a Boxing Day looks like for the sons of God. But the place where we'd like to start is where we left off. But before we do that, you guys want to pray together? Yes. Let's pray to start this message, and let's carry that atmosphere of prayer, asking the Lord to give us something throughout the Word and into our time of worship. Come on, lift your hands up. Jesus, we love you. God, fill us with power right now, Lord, to preach your word, to engage your word that it might change us so that your name would be praised. Lord, we say, devil, get behind us. We say those gates will fall, and it is our time to fight. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, let your gifts manifest tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Let's go to Job 14. Say there when you're there. Pastor's there. All right. Let's take a look at the seventh verse. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet, at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. Come on, you guys remember Sunday? Was that a good word? Yes. All right. Now, this evening, we're going to shake off that Christmas ham. We're going to stop worrying about our crazy lost relatives. We're in the house of God. Every one of us just got to witness a phenomenon where there's these pretty little wrapped boxes under a tree. You remember that? Tonight, we're going to tear open boxes that come from our Father. We're not going to be concerned about trinkets. We're searching for treasure. No more timidity in this room. We are going after the kingdom of God. Somebody say, I'm going after it tonight. tonight. Come on, one more time. I'm going after it tonight. tonight. Now today is Boxing Day, December 26th. Raise your hand if you have any idea what Boxing Day is. That's not really that many of us. You see, the first time that I heard about this day... I immediately put my hands up. But that's not what this day is about at all. It has actually nothing to do with boxing in a ring. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, that dictionary gives us the earliest attestations from Britain in the 1830s, defining this day as the first weekday after Christmas Day, observed as a holiday on which postmen, errand boys, and servants of various kinds expect to receive a Christmas box. Now, raise your hand if you guys received a Christmas box or gift yesterday. Yeah, think, think about what you received. It's just one thing that you received yesterday if you received something. Okay, now immediately forget what happened yesterday because the Holy Ghost is going to give us good, amazing gifts tonight. Somebody say amen. Look, Boxing Day is in a reference to holiday gifts. A Christmas box started in Britain, and it's a name for a Christmas present. Boxing Day was traditionally a day off for servants and the day when they received a Christmas box, catch this, from their master. The servants would also go home on Boxing Day to give Christmas boxes to their families. Guys... Today is the day that we receive a gift box from heaven, open it up, and share it with our families. Who's excited in the house of God? Look, on this Boxing Day, today especially, there are some unopened gifts that the Lord has waiting for us. Are you guys waiting in eager anticipation for this? Look, these aren't some common gifts. Look, this isn't the shirt that I got yesterday. I love my shirt, but this isn't the shirt that I got yesterday. These kind of gifts from heaven look nothing like the gifts that we got yesterday. It's something altogether different and something eternal. Get ready. Get ready. Amen. As Nick was talking, I couldn't help but think so many people eagerly expect and wait for Christmas. 
they make announcements, they make a to-do a to-do list of the gifts they want to have for December 25th. Think about this today. Tonight is the second to last service, the last Wednesday service of the entire year. Wow. Yeah. So let that sink in. God has brought us through as a body. He's brought your families through. If you're standing here, if you're sitting here tonight, this is a testimony to his great name, and he has a gift for us tonight. And the reason I'm saying this is because we're not worried about how long this message is going to last. We want the power of God to show up. And so we need you guys to get excited because I'm fired up right now. Are you guys ready? Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and say, there when you were there. We need some excitement in the room. Is everybody in the room there? Picking up in verse 23, this is Moses speaking to the nation of Israel. He says, when you heard the voice out of darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty. And we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks with him. But now, what sh- but now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we would die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the Lord God speaking out of fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. See, so the nation of Israel... God's chosen people had God himself speak to them out of a blazing mountain of fire. And here, I can relate to this, and I know you can too. It says they heard the voice of the Lord out of darkness. If you're sitting in this room tonight, his voice spoke to you in the midst of your, dark, of your darkness. His voice spoke to you in the midst of your sin. And in the very same way, we pick up in verse 24, it says, He has shown us his glory. His majesty, we have heard his voice from the fire. How many of us can relate to that tonight? Has God shown himself through his glory through you? Has he shown his majesty through you? Have you heard the very voice of God? And so the point I'm trying to make here is, as we're reading these verses in Deuteronomy chapter 5, we're running in parallel with the nation of Israel. We're on track with them. We're, We're right there along with them in the same experience that they're having right now. But it says here, at the end of 24, today we have seen that a man can live even, even if God speaks with him. But now, why should we die? Now we're drifting. Something else has creeped in. Something else has creeped in to the testimony that they have. In the very same way that we've experienced God's presence, we've experienced his voice bringing us out of darkness into his light. If you allow things to creep in, that has now snatched the gift that God is trying to present to you tonight. And the reason I'm saying this is when they go on to speak, they say, we, we would die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the Lord speaking out of fire as we have and survive? See, if God wanted to strike them dead, he already would have done it. That's right. No different in our lives. If God wanted to strike them dead, he would have already done it. Yeah. They've given him every single reason, just like we have given him every single reason outside of the kingdom of God before we're born again for him to kill us. But he wanted to redeem us. James 4 in verse 8 says that if we come near to him, he's going to come near to us. The nation of Israel had that opportunity to draw close to the Lord. He wants to speak to you, but are you willing to approach the fire that he's in? See, everybody wants to hear the voice of the Lord. But if he's speaking from the fire, are you willing to approach that fire? See, when you approach that fire, as the nation of Israel, they're speaking, they're, and fear has already cre- crept in, and saying, what, what mortal man has heard the voice of God like we have and survived? And they've completely forgotten that Moses from Exodus chapter 3 was standing in front of the burning bush, experiencing a revelation that they haven't had before. But Moses needed to do something in that moment. Moses saw the fire of God, but Moses needs to step into it. Amen. The moment you start stepping into the fire of God and and God is speaking to you through his his fire, the burning bush, something has to die. That fear has to die. Your anxiety has to die. That that passiveness has to die because he has something for you tonight. Come on, church. Are you willing? 
Are you willing tonight? Are you going to go up that mountain? We're going to go up this mountain tonight, and we've got to stir up that willing, hungry spirit inside of us. Are you hungry, church? Yes! See, we have a privilege. There's a foundation that's been laid for us to hear his voice and not die. So the nation of Israel, you can look at that in from Deuteronomy chapter 5 as, as the first Pentecost. Now, we know in Acts chapter 7, we have the Spirit of God break out. But here, they're hearing the very voice of God. And for them, it's enough. It's enough for them to say, no, we're going to elect Moses to go hear from God for us. In the very same way that God has promises for you, are you willing to let somebody else go in your place to receive that promise? Are you willing to let somebody else go in your place to receive the gift that God has for you? See, God has a gift for each and every single one of us, but nobody else can step in your place for it. And so when they elected Moses, it was out of fear. Tonight, let's break off that fear by pressing into the fire of God and receive the gift. See, we can't be timid anymore. See, when kids get their, their gifts on Christmas, they're not you know, nicely removing the packages. They're, they're ripping it ferociously. In the very same way, you have to have that same tenacity to go after what God has for you tonight. All right, everybody, turn a couple chapters over to Deuteronomy 18. We're going to start in the 19th verse. Can you tell that something's a little bit different tonight? Yes. There's six of us standing here on stage, and there's a reason for that. It's because when we got together and we began to pray about tonight, the Holy Spirit said that I have gifts that I want to pour out on my church, on my body on Wednesday, and I want this message preached. Guys, there's a reason why we're so passionately involved with this message. There's a reason why there's even a, a hint of seriousness on our faces right now is because we know that God has gifts for families in this room. Amen. Yeah. We know that there are gifts. And guys, it's our responsibility to grab hold of those gifts, tear them wide open, and yeah. see what the Holy Ghost wants to do with us Come tonight. On. Come on. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 and 19, the verse 19 says, If anyone does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name, I myself will call him to account. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded him to say, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, must be put to death. You see, it's a really, really serious thing speaking for God. It's a really, really serious thing when you open your mouth and say, the Lord says. When you open your mouth and say, brother, I think the Lord's doing this in your life. It's a serious thing. In verse 21, you may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken, hear this, presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. Now, when you hear this verse for the first time or the first time in a long time, you might be thinking, oh, yeah. Yeah, presumptuously, like when I have a feeling and I, I go up and I deliver a word and uh, it just wasn't God. Well, that's one aspect of what this verse is talking about. But we're going to turn this verse on its head tonight just for a second and talk about the other side of presumption. That word in Hebrew is number 2087. It means presumptuousness, but the absolute synonym and equal definition is pride. Presumptuousness and pride cause us to speak when the Lord has not directed us to speak. But check out the opposite. Look, more poignantly for us tonight, presumption and pride cause us not to speak when the Lord has a box for us to open up and speak. You might be sitting here and you're already presuming, oh, I already know what my box is going to be. <laughs> Man, I already know. Lord, I, I got my box down. I, I can guess it a mile away. I see how big it is. I see how it's shaped. You, you got an interesting piece of wrapping paper on that. See, the thing is that presumptuousness gets us in trouble. So we, what we want to do tonight is wipe that slate clean. Yeah. Wipe it all the way clean and allow God to speak to you a fresh word from heaven tonight. Because there are boxes and gifts that we want to tear open tonight. Get in there, see what the Lord wants to say, and then act in confidence. When we presume, our confidence goes away. It's a false sense of confidence. Whether we're going in presumption or we're just kind of sitting back in presumption. You know, one of those presumptions could be, you know, that's really just not my field. 
That gift that the Lord gave him, yet yeah, I've never moved in that before. I don't have that kind of experience, so I'm not going to try for it. Knock that presumption off of its horse tonight. Amen. Tonight, we're going to have right gifts from God. We're going to have right revelation from the Lord. We're going to open the box that he has. We're going to tear it open, and we're going to find out exactly how the Lord wants to feed us tonight. Y'all with me, church? Oh, yes. Y'all still got that fire burning in y'all? Yeah. Come on, let's get in the word. James 4. Turn to James 4. You know, I was praying about this word and about uh, what, what the Lord wanted to say. My boy's there. And he showed me us not walking in the gifts that we've been, been called to have. It's kind of like a man who's, who's walking and he's going somewhere, but he has chains being put on him. And these chains are wearing him down. And these chains are slowing him down. They're, they're, they're not meant to go on the journey with him. But the man has to come out of those chains. So tonight, we're going to tear open the box. Amen. Tonight, we're going we're gonna to tear off those chains so we can get to where the Lord wants us to get. Amen. In James 4, starting in verse 1, it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from the desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Wow. When you ask, you do not receive. Because you ask with wrong motives. That you may spend your gifts on, you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Church, how many times has that been us? We're asking the Lord for the, the, Lord for the wrong gifts, not the gifts that he's trying to give us. Well, let's turn this scripture on his head today. We have to throw off the things that hinder. I remember Pastor Matt preaching about this a couple of uh, messages back. We have to throw off those things that hinder so that we can get to where the Lord wants us to get we have to throw off the things that hinder so we can get to, to Mount Sinai, to the place where God is burning with holy fire. Amen. Yeah. What's keeping you from asking tonight? What, what keeps us from asking God for the gifts that he has? Because he's a faithful father. He is a good father and he gives good gifts. But we have to ask ourselves the question, what is keeping us from getting to the place that we need to get to? One of those things might be that we presume that God doesn't want to do anything with our lives. We may see somebody else's life and see that they're walking in the calling that, that, that God has given them. They're being blessed in it. They're being challenged and developed. But we may not see the same for ourselves. Church, we got we to gotta tear that open today. We got we to gotta get rid of that today. How about apathy? Apathy working against your faithfulness. The Lord has set you in a direction and he's called you to fight. You, he's given it to you, but you have to fight. Like that, that, that. That persistence and faithfulness that Daniel preached about a couple weeks ago. Church, we have, to, we have to tear away the things that are keeping us from opening the gift that the Lord has given us. Amen. What about this? Using what you think that you've been given to be seen. Now, us young men battling with selfish ambition, we don't deal with that, do we? we? We're the only ones who deal with that, right? Wanting to be seen. These things can't make it through the door that the Lord is calling us to ask for. We have to tear open these things so we can get his gift. How about this one? Fear or unbelief as it pertains to the gifts. In James 3, it tells us how dangerous the tongue is, that a small spark sets a whole forest ablaze, that it corrupts the whole man and sets the course of his life on fire. For hell, not for good, for hell. But what if today, what if on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, what if we tore open the gift that God wanted us to have? What if we, we turned that? We ask the Lord to set, our, set our, our tongues ablaze with his fire. We ask the Lord to set us ablaze for his purposes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, have to ask, we have to open our mouths in full of faith and ask the Lord, Lord, what gift do you have for me? Lord, what do I need to be walking in? What power do you have for me to be clothed in so I can go up and people can experience resurrection life through me, through, through what you've given me? Amen. Do y'all want that tonight? Yes. Are y'all hungry? See, the Proverbs say that the laborer's hunger works for him. It, his appetite drives him on. Are you hungry tonight? Yes. What are you hungry for? Gifts of God. Yes. Matthew 7. Turn to Matthew 7, church. See, we, we have to ask ourselves, what are we hungry for? Are we hungry for, 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 for food that doesn't satisfy? For the things of, of, of our flesh? For the things that, that we're used to? Or are we hungry for the gift of God? Or are you hungry for, for what he's called us to? See, in, in Matthew 7, Jesus tells us something. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
For everyone who asks, he receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Church, are you ready to ask the Lord for what he has for you? Yeah. Church, I'm so ready. I'm so ready to let the, the, the shame from yesterday fall away. I'm so ready for, for, to, to let the things that have hindered me, the things that have kept me from walking in my calling, be burned up in the holy fire of God. Amen. But you know what I got to do? I got to take that tongue that, that could be used to, to burn my life uh, for, with fire for hell. I got to take that same tongue full of faith and ask the Lord, Lord, would you burn in me? Lord, would you give me those gifts that you have ordained for me to walk in the calling? Church, do you want that tonight? Yeah. Well, we don't get a chance to do it. Before we go to Romans 12, while Lenten was speaking, I couldn't help but think when soldiers go off to war, they grab the ammunition they need, the weapon they need. When they get on the battlefield, there is no opportunity to go find a weapon. Now think about this. There are so many people already preparing for next year. When it's 2019, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Think about this. This is the last Wednesday service of the year. If we've made it this far, the enemy's not happy with what is going on at LCM, the vision, the direction of where we're headed. Now think about 2019, and we're not even there yet. So if a soldier needs to get the weapon and the ammunition he needs so he's properly equipped for battle, what about tonight? What if this was your last chance, your only chance to ask the Lord for what he desires for you? Not, not tomorrow, not, a, not at the New Year service, not even on Sunday, but tonight. And while Linton was given that word, I'm thinking, Lord, we can have what you want for us if we just ask. You want to give this to us. We don't want to wait till tomorrow and say, okay, well, Lord, I'm going to ask now. You have an opportunity tonight to ask for that gift. Amen. Okay, open up your Bibles to Romans 12. And find verse 3 when you get there. What Ben said should stir us to some kind of special zeal for the Lord and for his house. And as we move through this word, begin to ask. You can ask from your seat, God, as soon as these guys are done talking, I'm going to run to this altar because I know you have something for me. Amen. Verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, same standard, different functions. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If, he, if it is serving, everyone say serving. 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 Let him serve. If it is teaching, say teaching. Teaching. Let him teach. If it is encouraging, say encouraging. Encouraging. Let him encourage. If it is contributing, say contributing. Contributing. To the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern, govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Now, that's a lot of scripture. But do you think our Lord, our Father, is short of gifts to give? No, no. I promise you, Chris, tonight, he has a gift for you. Amen. DJ, he has a gift for you tonight. Amen. Andrew, this gift. Yeah. Elder Baj, Elder Charlie, you are gifts to us. <laughs> but I believe God even has a gift for you tonight. Yeah. He's not partial in giving his gifts. He's a good father. Yeah, this is the ticket to ride for the fired up Christian to tear open the miraculous gifts of God, to let it out, to not be timid. Jesus is not giving us tiny trinkets to entertain your service-to-service Christian, but tenacious treasure to invoke the obedience of the nations. Now, come on, church. If you want to see me get a little excited, let's talk about the obedience of the nation. Let's talk about the gospel going out and being proclaimed, the greatness of who he is. 
These are the kind of gifts that the Father is giving us so that we might go and preach and impart something of the heavens to people who don't even know what's coming. All they know is that they have a lack, and they're asking right now, who will go? Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and find verse 10 and say there when you're there. Now, I have to ask. Think about worship service. Was there something right on the tip of your tongue that you knew you should have let out? Was there something in your hands that you knew you needed to impart? Was there, was there something of the Spirit of God stirring you up, but you just didn't know how to handle it? Well, tonight, we're saying, open the door wide and let those gifts flow through you. The Father is giving us gifts so that we can share them. Verse 10. Each one should use whatever gift he has, has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Amen. To him be the glory Amen. and the power forever and ever. Amen. Come on, we have gifts, but we need to learn how to receive gifts different than the world. Yeah. See, when the world gets a gift, they say, it's mine. Mm -hmm. And it's not for anyone else. Yeah. But when the Father gives you a gift, it is for them. Yeah. Because as James 1.17 says, all good and perfect gifts come down from the Father. Mm -hmm. So when we receive something of the heavens, that is our cue, then we have something for the nations. Amen. Amen. Further, we should take ownership of that precious gift, and we should pour it out on the church. We should pour it out on our brothers. We should pour it out on our families. And I'm, I'm all about the nations. I, I think about the nations every day. But tonight, we're not overseas. That's right. We're at LCM. That's right. We're in the sanctuary. So we have an obligation to let that Holy Spirit gift move through us tonight. Amen. We're not going to wait till Sunday service or next service. We're going to take hold of it tonight. Do you guys want to take hold of it tonight? Yes. Do you want to take hold of it tonight? Yes. How bad? Who, 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 who wants it more than anyone else in here? Come on, Paul? Yeah. Oh, come on. Everyone stand to your feet. Come on. Who wants the gifts of God in the house? Come on. Amen. All right, church, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and the fourth verse. Pretty quick, Pastor. Pastor Wade's always led by the Holy Ghost. It says in verse 4, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Everybody say different kinds. Different kinds. Man, I've been watching something go on throughout our body this time of the year. And uh, what I've observed is that throughout our body, everybody's been doing this practice of gift giving. And you know what it's like? You guys ever participate in a white Santa? Yeah. Yeah. White elephant gift? I'm sorry. A white elephant gift giving? You participate where you draw names and you have to give gifts to somebody? What do we often do? We set limits on those gifts. We set a, a, a monetary limit. And what that causes is that causes your gift that you give to somebody for you to think about it. How to have the most meaningful gift in that allotted uh, amount of money. What I've been seeing that's beautiful, I've been seeing some of my friends, some of my pastors start to make gifts for the people that, that they've been given. That's pretty cool, isn't it? When you think about this, when you get a gift that somebody has made, and not just made for anybody else, but made specifically for you. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Man, that's special, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's some kind of gift, isn't it? Yeah. Man, how does it feel to know that our God has crafted a gift for you? Amen. He's crafted a gift specifically for you, and he's given different kinds of gifts. That means everybody else might have a different gift than what you have, but you want to know what special is? God gave that to you, Amen. and specifically you. Amen. Man, Ephesians 2 says 
That we were called in Christ Jesus to do good works, which He prepared in advance for us to do. Man, think of that for a second. He's prepared works in advance for every single person in this room to accomplish. That means every person. None of you are left out. That's, that means Jenny in the back. God has given specific works for you to do, and He has given you specific gifts so you can go and do those works. That means Cody over there on the left side of the room. That means Brandon. That means every person in the room, none of you are excluded. God has prepared specific gifts for each and every one of you. Man, how, how much do you want to open it tonight? That means you may not know what it is now, but you can know what it is if you open it. How many of you want to break that gift out of the box and see what it has? It says in verse 5, there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. We're not all called to the same function, and that's a beautiful thing. We need to let that soak into our hearts tonight, that we are not all called to the same specific function, but we are all called to the same God and the same body. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Everybody say all men. All men. Everybody say the same God. The same God. That means the same God that is working through Elder Charlie, it gets to work in me. Amen. The same God that works through Pastor Matt and Pastor Matt and Pastor Wade and Pastor Eric and Elder Baj gets to work through you. Amen. Man, that leaves no room for excuse, does it? You see the mighty things that the men of God before us do. The same God who works in them gets to work in you tonight. The same God gets to give you specific gifts. Verse 7 says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Everybody say common good. Common good. That means your gift is not just for you. As my brother said. Your gift is given to you to build up this body and to build up what God is doing amongst us. I saw a quote the other day. It said, a disciple is someone who has been brought from being a recipient of the church's mission to becoming responsible for the church's mission. Amen. That means if you're a disciple in this church, you are no longer just receiving, you're putting into practice what God has given you for the church. I want to tell you tonight that if you want to walk in the gifts, if you want to stir up and break open those gifts, you've got to learn to use them for the body. You have to start thinking about other people in the room other than yourself. Many times God does not give us things because we are too self-centered like our brother shared in James. If you ask with selfish motives, will our father give you any gifts? Do you desire to give your children gifts when they're selfish? No. You want to give your children gifts when they want to use that to bless others. Man, it blesses me when I give my son a gift and he turns right over to Jonathan and says, you can play with it. That's what the gifts are given for, for the common good. Amen. It goes on to mention that there are gifts of wisdom. There are gifts of knowledge given. There are gifts of faith. There are gifts of healing. There are gifts of miraculous powers. Gifts of prophecy. Gifts of distinguishing between spirits. Gifts of speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to another interpretation of those tongues. Man, all of these in verse 12 are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He gives them to each one just as He determines. Man, God has determined that you have those gifts. And I want to submit to you, think about this. Which gift has God given you? Does He give everyone the gift of prophecy? It says to eagerly desire the greater gifts. But there are so many other gifts on this list that He can give. How many of these do you want to flow in? All of them. Come on, how many gifts do you want to flow in? All of them. Man, I want all of these. How many of these gifts can you think of right now? I need to walk in more of that. Or how many of these, how many of these gifts, when I mentioned prophecy, or I mentioned the gift of healing, the Lord is speaking to your heart and He's saying, that's for you. You need to rise up and take it. You need to rise up and take it tonight. Amen. How many of you, God's been speaking over a certain amount of time that you have the gift of interpretation of tongues, but you've been holding back? You've been holding back. Elder Charlie gives a powerful prophecy in tongues. Elder Baj gives a powerful prophecy in tongues, and you wait for somebody else to give it, and you know that the Lord is giving you that gift. Man, tonight is the night to rise up, church. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. For you, all of you, 
for us, all the men on this stage, to walk in gifts that we've never walked in before. Amen. Think about that. It's time to open up the gift and see what he has, church. Yeah. It's time to see what he has. And it may not be, may not be what you've always walked in or conceived or presumptuously thought. Maybe that he has something for you that you never even imagined, that you didn't think you were worthy enough to receive. Church, it's time to open up those gifts. It's time to take hold of those treasures, push away the trinkets. It's time to tear open the gifts without being timid. Every gift that Teresa just mentioned out of 1 Corinthians 12, these gifts are treasures from heaven. When the Lord blesses us with a gift, he expects us to do something with it. See, there's so many people running around saying, man, I'm spirit-filled and I speak in tongues. But if you're spirit-filled and you speak in tongues, you're anointed and you're gifted, but you're not doing it where God has told you to do it, then you're in sin. That's true. There's so many people who are gifted to prophesy. So many people who are gifted, miraculous powers, healing, gift of faith. But instead of being where God has called them to be, they're using it for the world. Yeah. They're using it to, to, to steal money from people. They're using it against what God has actually called them to do. Every, the purpose of being filled with the Spirit of God, being anointed by the Spirit of God, being given these gifts out of 1 Corinthians 12 that are promised to us is for the benefit of God's kingdom. It's always about him. It was never about us. The only reason you should want the gift of God in your life is to please him and lay it back down at his feet as a crown. Yes. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 12. Yeah. Say there when you're there. 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 We see this same concept with the nation of Israel. The Lord is speaking to them, picking up in verse 10. He says, but when you, but you will cross the Jordan and settle in the land the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. And he will give you rest from all your enemies around you so that you will live in safety. Then to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. There you are to bring everything I commanded you, your burnt offering and sacrifice, your tithes and special gifts and all the choice possession you have vowed to the Lord. See, the thing is, in the very same way that the Lord specifically told the nation of Israel, this is the land that I'm giving you. This is, the, this is your inheritance. He also specified what he required from them. The gifts that have been given to us are to be used in the place that God has called us to be. We cannot have a timid effort in our callings. So when God is revealed to you, like Teresa said during service, okay, I want you to prophesy. I need you to step out in faith. You can't be timid. In that moment, you need to speak what the Spirit of God is giving you utterance for. Because it's not only for you, but it's for the entire body. You have no idea what your brother, your sister to your, your, to your left or your right needs in that moment. And if God is asking you, I need you to speak, to be bold, to be tenacious, to tear this gift open. See, we want to be used by God, but in order to be used by God, we have to step out in faith. In order to be used by God, we have to let go of that fear. We have to let go of that timidity, like it says in 2 Timothy. He's not given the spirit of fear, but a power of love and self-discipline. So think about the wise men. Think about the men when Jesus was born. These men had gifts, but the purpose of their gifts was to go and see the king of Israel and lay it down at his feet. What is the purpose of God blessing us with his spirit, blessing us with the gifts that he's, he wants us to have? It's for his kingdom. It's for his purpose. It's for his will and direction of your, not only your life, but for those who are not even in the kingdom yet. The entire point of Jesus', Jesus ministry, the miraculous things that he did, was to draw people closer to the Father and the Father closer to them, to reveal them, reveal the Father unto them. In the very same way, when we see people being raised from the dead, we see miraculous powers, we see healings, we see the mighty things that God desires for us to do upon this earth. It's for the nations. It's for his will. It's for those lost sheep that he's beckoning to for them to come into his kingdom. And he wants to do it through you. He wants to do it through the gift that he's assigned and apportioned to you. But you have to go after it. You have to have a tenacity. You have to offer right sacrifices before the Lord. And those right sacrifices is you laying down your life completely and say, Lord, I don't care. I want it. I want it now. I'm, I'm going to do anything. I will do anything. Just like you were first born again. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't care what you want me to do. 
The life that I'm living is absolutely worth this, and I'm willing to burn it down for your glory. In the very same way, there are gifts that he wants to give us. If you just let that sink in and not just let it be an intellectual acknowledgement, but actually believe that God wants to give you a gift tonight, then you can have that. If you eagerly desire to be filled with that gift, he will give it to you. Look at verse 11 in Deuteronomy 12. It says, Then to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. There you are to bring everything I command you, your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and special gifts, and all the choice possessions you have vowed to the Lord. You see, God has determined a place that every single person in this room is to be. God is determined and he has set a place for you to be. He has set a church for you to be in. And to operate in those gifts, that means you have to be committed to the place that God has called you to be in. God will not give gifts for the body to somebody who is not committed to the body. You have to be fully dedicated to bringing your gift to the place God has called you. Amen? Amen. Turn to Psalm 69, verse 7. You see, many of you spent time with your relatives. Many of you have lost relatives in the room. I know, I have them. Any of you have some tough conversations yesterday and the day before? I had some tough conversations conversation yesterday and the day before. People don't understand why it is that you are called to a specific place. Is that correct? Yeah. You ever get that question, man, why do you bring your gifts to that place? Man, you've got so many gifts to offer the world. And why are you bringing your gifts to that one place? It's because this is the place that God has set His name for you. That is why. Look at Psalm 69, verse 7. It says, For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. See what happens when you're committed to a place God has called you in? You've got to endure some scorn. You've got to endure some shame. You've got to be like a stranger. Any of you feel like a stranger to your, to your brothers? You feel like an alien to your own mother's sons? That is because God has set you in this place, and He is causing a distinction between the righteous and the wicked. And He's doing it, doing it in your lives. But look at verse 9. It says, For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. Man, come on, what do you have to have tonight, church? You have got to have zeal for the house of God consume you. Man, it is now a time to rise up and have the zeal of God burn in our hearts tonight. Man, I am telling you, church, that when God sees a man who is on fire for his spirit, when God sees a woman who is on fire for the holiness of God and on fire for the house of God, that is a person God wants to give gifts to. Tonight is a night that we need to ask the Lord, send down your fire on us. Lord, please increase our zeal. If anyone is apathetic in the room, ask the Lord, Lord, increase the zeal of my heart for your name. Increase the zeal of my heart for this house specifically, for my brothers specifically in this house, for my pastors in this house specifically, for the mission of this house. Please increase our zeal. Please increase our zeal. That is what God wants to work with. Men and women who are on fire for his house. Come on. Do you want more of that fire in you? Do you want to have that fire raging in your hearts for the house of God? And it is time to rise up and ask his fire to consume us. Come on. I want to speak to you. Those of you that are my brothers, my sisters, that have been held back by fear, that have been held back by insecurity up to this point, that you sit here as grown men and women in the Lord, and there are, at, there are areas of your life and your calling you've been too afraid to stretch out and try it. I want to speak to those of you who presumed that you're incapable of stretching out to the other gifts. That once you prayed in tongues, once you prophesied, and that's it. In Numbers 25, Phinehas rose up in the zeal of God. And a spear was put in his hand. And he drove that spear through the problem. And it went right through it into the earth. When you are filled with the zeal of God, this becomes easy. You begin to break barriers that you've scratched against your whole life. Many of you have been looking at these things like a brick wall and it's impossible for you to get through it. But when you really get filled with the zeal of God and His power comes on you, shatter that wall. We're going to tear this box open tonight. I know each of you have watched little children. They try and open a gift that's been under the tree. 
and they're too young, too immature. They've never actually opened a gift before. So they flail about and they begin to look to the Father and say, I can't do it. This is what many of you are like who've never stretched out for a greater gift. You've gotten used to and comfortable with the bottle. You've gotten used to it and comfortable with the beginning of the faith. Where you first got baptized, you first learned to speak in tongues. But I tell you, saints, once you get used to breaking presents open, once you get used to tearing boxes open, nobody else has to tell you how to find the greater gifts. They come to you. Who in this house wants to break open the greater gifts? Saints, we are done messing around with trinkets. We're not going to be in the faith for 10, 20 years and play with children's toys. We have swords. We have shields. We have the power of God that is available us tonight. All that we have to do is raise ourselves up in the strength of the Lord and rebuke that timid spirit. And tonight, in this room, we're going to see people healed. We're going to see people get filled with the Holy Ghost all over again. We're going to see people who have prophesied once or maybe not ever prophesied before begin to open up in their souls. Who in this room wants more of the gifts? Yes. Say, I want it all. I want it all. We're going to go for 100%. We're not going to just get a little taste of Jesus. I want all of him. Amen. You going to go with me? Yes. Come on, church. Y'all feel that fire burning? Yes. I, got, I got a fire burning right now in my soul. And it's the same fire that you have burning in your souls. Now, look, let's look in Numbers 25, in verse 10. And see what happens when Phineas, who has that, that zeal for God, let's see what happens when he goes, he steps out in faith and he does what the Lord has called him to do. In verse 10, it says, the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away from the Israelites for he was zealous as I am for my honor among them. Yeah. So that in my zeal, I did not put an end to any of them. Now church, we've just all left this. This past week where you've seen uh, the wrath of God on, on people. You, you've seen uh, lost relatives and you, you've seen things that, that you know. You know uh, Psalm 45, 7 applies to. The Lord hates wickedness and loves righteousness. But it's not just enough to hate wickedness, wickedness and love righteousness and not act. Phinehas acted. Let's see what happened. Therefore, tell them I am making a covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made an atonement for the Israelites. Come on, church, we got people out there, some of them your blood relatives, that need atonement to be made for their lives. Yeah. We, you have people that you don't even know about, people that are, are weighed down by sin, weighed down by bondage, and they need the gifts that you have. They need the things that God wants to do in your life. Remember don't be presumptuous in thinking that he has nothing to say in your life. He has something specifically to say through your obedience and through your actions. How zealous for the kingdom of God are you tonight? How zealous is, is a holy zeal starting to stir up inside you? you see, because it, it's a fire. It's a fire rumbling right now. Because God wants to, wants to fundamentally change our lives. He wants to take things that we, we had no uh, possible, possible conception of what he wants to do with our lives. And he wants to remake them. But you have to step into that fire like them said. We have to step out and ask God for the gifts that he's calling us to. It must, it must rise in your soul tonight. And God's covenant will you, with you will be made. Now I want to remind us of something. Something our, our pastors have said just this past Sunday. He talked about Moses. He talked about Moses and a rock. See, that, that rock was stricken once. But the second time, the Lord said, speak to the rock. And we have a Savior who was stricken for our transgressions. He, he tasted the wrath of God for us. But now we have an opportunity to speak to the rock, to speak to that Savior and ask him, Lord, what do you want out of me? What do you want out of me? Are you ready to speak to that rock and, and ask him? Because the veil has been torn. But you have to step out and ask the Lord. And we have a faithful God who will meet us. Amen. Let's tear open this box tonight. It's not, it's not for tomorrow. It's not for your past. We're going to tear it open tonight. You're going to have that opportunity tonight. Question is, will you step out in faith? Because if you do, the Lord will show himself faithful tonight. Amen. Come on, I know what you're thinking. I can see it in the eyes of a few of you in this room. They sent the young men to come stand on stage and preach about zeal and pump us up. We're going to have a, an exuberant, youthful service. Are you priests of this kingdom to come or not? Yes. Are you ambassadors of the Almighty or not? 
then what kind of zeal like Phinehas should we be seeing in here? Who is exempt? Nobody. Who is exempt? Nobody. What kind of zeal is possible for this room? See, this is not a message for those who are young. This is not a message for those who are new in the faith. This is a message for every man, woman, and the child in this room. And yes, I'm speaking to you. That right now we have the ability to go higher. We have the ability to see the kind of faith that men of old have had. We're speaking about before Pentecost, saints. That this man was so filled with zeal that nothing could stand in the presence of God that was out of order in his sight. And he did not have Pentecost. What about you? Where are we at in this room? Now standing with Jesus Christ himself, having crucified himself, and his spirit being poured out on you, what is possible? Right now, we are going to rise up in what is in us. We already read Job 14. In the seventh verse, it says that at the scent of rain, sprouts will come back up. There's something you to spring back up inside of your life that has been lying dormant. See, a reed and a sprout are very similar. They move in the wind. They move in the rain. It's a storm going on all around us out here, spiritually and physically. But we're going to grow up into oaks of righteousness. We're not going to stay saplings. Maybe the Spirit has begun to rain on us, but it is not at all where we are staying. We are going to rise up in the strength of God and provide shade, provide fruit. The men in this room, like Assad, are going to be pillars in the house of God that cannot be moved. I want to see you try and tear that man from where he is called to be. You do better to try and get an oak tree out of that yard. We are not staying where we are. We have so much higher to go, and it's not for a select few. It's for every man, woman, and child in here that is called as a priest and an ambassador of the Lord Almighty. We will no longer settle for marginalized, timid, or neutered versions of what the Spirit has for us. Tonight we walk in the power of God and the Scriptures. Who in this room wants to be transformed? Say, I want to be transformed into the fully capable man of God that I am called to be. Because I know good things are called from Ray and Ruby's life. I know the potential that is in John and Joy and that steadfast spirit that is there. I know what Daniel Cho can become. This room is filled with people who are saplings and seeds that are also filled with the potential of God. The question is, how much of it do we want to tap into tonight? I say we tear it open. Let's tear it open. What do you need to do in this room to tear it open in your life? Let's take just a moment. Let's consider this. Where does the zeal for God's house need to rise up inside of your soul? Have you been timid about healing? Have you been timid about faith? Have you been timid about words of wisdom and knowledge giving in your workplace? Where is it that you have been timid? Where is it that this wrapping paper has kept you from the gifts of God? Where is it you're going to break open and slash it and get you what God has for you when we stand? Where are we going to go with our lives tonight? You see, it is nothing more than fickle wrapper paper between you and the greater gifts. There is nothing more substantial there. It's just an illusion. It just looks like it's a barrier. It just looks like it can stop you. But really, all that we have to do is put our hands on it to break it open. 2 Timothy 1, verse 6 through 7 says, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Church, tonight we want to practice that. We want to practice the laying on of hands tonight. We're going to get into worship, and we want, we mention those gifts that God has determined that each one of us have. We want you tonight, if you are praying and you are asking the Lord, Lord, I want those gifts. We want to lay hands on you tonight. Tonight, your gift may be the gift of prophecy. Tonight, your gift may be more wisdom. Tonight, your gift may be distinguishing between spirits. Or maybe your gift is a fresh and filling of the Holy Ghost fire in your soul. Maybe your gift tonight is a scent of water for you to rise up and be able to fan into flame what he has for you. We're going to ask if our pastors tonight would come forward. We're going to have all three pastors, if, if both of our elders 
tonight would come forward. We want to have our pastors and our elders lay hands on us. If you have a gift, a specific gift that you're longing for, what do you have to do? All you have to do is ask. You don't have to break open what Jesus Christ has done for you. You don't have to break Jesus. You just have to ask Him tonight. Church, I have been in services where the Spirit of God has moved so powerfully that every man and woman and child can feel the holy weight of God in the room. I have been in services where life-giving words have been prophesied to every man in the room. You remember those nights, John Dang? You remember those nights, Nick? I remember those nights where we sought the Lord's face and He gave us words specifically for us. I want to have that kind of night tonight with you guys. All of the team, we want to have that kind of night with you. We want to have a kind of night where we, we forget about everything else. We forget about the clock. We forget about everything that happened this year and we say, Lord, what gift do you have for me? Lord, I want to fan and to flame that gift. Lord, I don't want to be a dying flame. I don't want to be a star that is failing. Lord, I want to burn brightly for you. Lord, I want to take hold of that which you have taken hold of me for. Lord, I want to take hold of that which you have died for me. You see, those gifts weren't just bought with trinkets. Those gifts weren't just bought with simple money. Those gifts were bought for you with treasure. Jesus Christ gave up His own blood so that you can have those gifts. God the Father offered up His Son. It says in Romans, He who did not spare His Son, but gave Him up for us all, how much more will He give you in Christ? I believe the Lord has so much for every person in this room. Michael, I believe the Lord has gifts for you, brother, that He wants you to break open. Chris, I believe the Lord has gifts for you, brother, that he wants you to break open tonight. And these gifts will be for you so that you can use the rest of your life for the house of God and to benefit this entire church. Carlos, I believe God has gifts for you tonight, brother, that he wants you to break open. As we enter into worship, as we stand, let's move on what God is speaking to us. If there is a gift that you want, come to these pastors and say, Pastor, I want the gift of healing. Pray for me. Pastor, I want more of the Holy Spirit. Pray for me. Pastor, I want the gift of leadership for my home and for the rest of this body. Lord, pray for me. If you have a gift on your heart, run to the altar as Peyton leads us into worship. If you want more of the Holy Ghost fire, run to the altar. If you need to get your heart right, If you need to get pride out of the way, if you've been self-seeking, come to the altar. Before Justin begins to pray for us, I'm looking out at your faces, and you're loved by the Lord. There's nobody in here that's not loved by the Lord. You're not asking a rock. You're not in the middle of a desert asking a rock. You're asking a Savior who already loves you so much that he was torn open for you. You don't have to go and ask an impersonal rock for water. You're asking him. When you step up here and we pray for you, do not step up and say, I don't know, just pray for me. Don't do that. You walk up here and ask your father for the gift that you have wanted and been scared to act on and then those who are his representatives will put our hands on you like it were his hands and he the good father will meet you right here man these guys have stirred up my zeal and I know that the Lord is eager like every good father to give you something good tonight Lately, we've had altar calls where every person was at the altar. And that's beautiful, but the net effect is, is nobody's at the altar because everybody is. I'm not discouraging you from coming. I'm saying come with a purpose. Don't come in a crowd. Come and say, like in my life, any one of you that's bold enough to do it, I want the gift of distinguishing between spirits. And I know that my father, I want 
So some brave person in here is going to pray for me. What gift have you been wanting for the benefit of this body? Because he desires to give it. Justin. Father, you are a good, good father. Lord, we ask, Lord, that tonight, Lord, you would, you would bestow on us those gifts that you have for us in heaven. Lord, those holy gifts, Lord, that you've given us. Lord, that we would rise up like a tree. Lord, that we would flourish in the house of God. Lord, we ask that zeal would rise in this place. Lord, that timidity would be cast down. Lord, we ask that we would set aside all fear and we would just reach out for it. Lord, that we would reach out what you have for us. Lord, let us walk away completely changed. Lord, let us walk away branded with gifts that you have given us, mighty God. Lord, we ask that you would stir us up now. Lord, that all of us, all of us would be stirred into flowing in what you have. In Jesus' name we ask.